Hello everybody, today we are going to DIY boutonnieres. This is one of my most requested DIY videos that everyone wants to see, and I'm shooting this for the average Jane to make boutonnieres. Average Joe, average Jane. Maybe you gotta make them for a wedding, maybe you wanna make them for your kid's homecoming, prom, uh, maybe you just wanna try something new with flowers. Pretty easy, and some of my favorite tricks are that I want you to have a lot of different materials, so to speak. So, it's cold, so I'm gonna wear this weird hat. But let's take a look at what I have I'm working with today. And my trick is I want you to have at least five materials, five different ingredients, if you will. You wanna look for texture and you wanna look for blooms and let's see what we're working with. So I have wax flower, I've got some fun bleach stuff. These are like seed pods off of scabiosa, a ranunculus, another scabiosa, ruscus pieces, and then this is bleach ruscus. So I'm going through a phase right now with this bleach stuff. I get it from my wholesaler. But you want to, if you are making your boutonnieres, want to have your stuff ready to work with for saving time. So don't lug all of this kind, like full product over to your workstation. Have what you need to work with ready to go. Obviously, we also, I just use regular old floral tape in a pin and I do them pretty simply. You can always get into wiring and more co complex sort of work flows, but this is a really easy boutonniere. Let's make it. All right, so my favorite thing to start with when I'm making a boutonniere is my backer piece. Um, you wanna remember that this is gonna be flat up against that lapel. So you want something that's got a little bit of flair and then with any detail work, I just pick off this stuff that doesn't look perfect, but this is ready to go. And then sometimes I like adding something to add a little bit more structure or body. This is a thicker stem, this wax flower. I like to think of boutonnieres as the kind of work that um, you want to be able to speed through and you want to be able to make these really efficiently. And I'm going to keep pinching in this spot. So this is where I'm going to end taping. But so I layer building upward like this. So then I've got some texture, I've got some color. Then it's time for a focal bloom. I'm gonna lay this ranunculus. Now, you don't wanna tape so he's like way up here because then we won't have any strength and we're, um, we wanna tape so he's a little lower. Pinching, love how this is coming together. Then I'm gonna see if I've got room for this scabiosa. He's sort of doing his own thing, but cute. Not at the same level. You wanna try for a different level. Ah, I love that. Cute, Kaylin. This is so cute, the way he laid there. I like that. Um, and then I'm just going to add in some textural elements. So like you're weaving. Love that. Man, this is coming together, you guys. And then I always like having somebody down in front doing something funny. Love. It's a little flat, so give them a little room. Okay, so when you get about here... I want you to do your first round of taping. So this is a little technical, but what you're going to do is you're going to attach your tape and then just work your way around. This is the part that takes the most practice. Um, florist tape, flower tape, you know that it gets sticky by pulling on it. You don't want to tape a 10 foot tail. I just like keeping ours pretty short. Tear. So now we've got this. Your stuff may have moved when you tape. You can just sort of move it around and change the position. I love what we're working with, but now we're gonna add some flair, if you will. Some of these dried bits have been really fun for me um, to have in the studio. So you can put these in the back. You can layer them, work them through. I love him doing a little movement right here. Cute. Cuter. And then let's get one more guy up there, shall we? Oh, missed him. You don't have to have a death grip. That's one thing I um, want to remind you of. And if you want to do this with silks uh, that you get at the craft store for a homecoming or a prom or whatever you're trying your hand at, that's totally fine. There's no rules. So I'm just sort of threading this guy through the back. I'll fix that other guy in a second love this guy down in front love let's tape again so if you remember in the beginning i talked about utilizing five different elements so once i have my tape let's see i have 
wax flower, one, ruscus, two, three, four, five, six. So I pass the boutonniere class today. Then you want to just go through and trim up a little bit of cleaning up things that you don't want to be front and center. This guy's a little tall, so I might take him down a hair. So let's see. Cute. Cute. This is ready to go. So then we're going to flip over, trim our ends. I leave some space. You don't want to trim up here. Leave some space. Remember, you can always cut more. You can't add it back on. This bleach stuff is always hard to cut. Love. If you wanted to, you could add um, a special ribbon or something special right here. And then you're just going to take your pin. I like the green when we're doing green and white. And then secure it in and you're ready to go. Have fun at prom. Have fun at homecoming. Be safe. Dance really well. Remember when this was what a boutonniere looked like? <laughs> Don't be this person. Get a cool boutonniere. You can make it yourself. Let's see. What do we like better? A or B? I choose B. Have a good day. Hi, I'm excited to go to the dance together. I'm nervous, but I made you this boutonniere. I'm going to pin it on you.